Hey, it's Russ and Proto's Expert. We're looking at this Back to Basics in Mix Basics series. And this time I'm going to show you what you can do with the 7-band EQ3. We looked at the 1-band last time, looked at the power of that. And the 7-band has some additional features. And of course, in some ways, it's a self-contained version of using several things at the same time. And uh, we're going to look at that as... I showed you in the first one, we have input and output, and that's essential when you're using any EQ plugin, because EQ is effectively just band-based gain and reduction on sound. So when you push EQ up, of course, it increases the gain by its very nature. And depending on where you do that, it will increase more or less gain. So if I play you uh, some of this piece of music I've got here, we start pushing up the middle. See straight away, our, our output is now clipping. So uh, it's important that you get those matched. We've also got this phase switch here. That means it reverses the phase uh, of it, the audio going through it. And that can be useful as well. Maybe mixing a snare drum, which has got two mics on it, a top and a bottom snare. And sometimes flipping the phase can add more bottom end. Although, uh, as we've said a lot of time on the Protoss Expert site, often the, the phase between two microphones isn't exactly 180 degrees out. So it's, it's well worth giving that a go, but often uh, that can create more problems than it, it solves. So there's the phase switch there. And then what you have then is you have a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And we'll look at those in a while. Then we have low, low, mid, mid, high, mid, and high frequencies across the band there. Helpfully color coded. And we can switch those on and off. And as we switch them on and off, you can see that the, the little dots on the tracer on the screen come on and off. Now there's another way we could change things. We can literally just grab something. Let's say we wanted to change the top end of this. Let's say, in fact, we'll go on this piano first. I've got two examples. I've got a piano. So I want to warm that piano up. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to use, just take the top end down a bit. What I'm also going to do now is this is the high pass filter. And what high pass filters do, in fact, before we do any of this, I'm just going to reset that. Give me a second. I'm going to show you the high and the low pass filter because they can be very useful. Sometimes it's all you need. So, once we reduce some of the bottom end, we turn this on. There's the switch there. And then we have the frequency, which we can either use here. And then we have the slope. If we're using it as a simple slope EQ. And then we have a band pass as well that we can use instead. And we can change the slope there. But for now, we're just going to use the the basic uh, slope version of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to just play the piano. We start pushing that up now. Here we're getting thinner. Kind of grab it here. Now if we change the severity of that by changing the Q of it, but at the top end as well with the, the low pass filter, Turn that right up for now, just show you that. Sounds like an old piano now. It's not hi-fi anymore. If you want a phone effect, you could come right to the middle. So if you're ever trying to get that kind of phone voice, on vocals, this is the trick to use. Just use filters, go right across them, and they've got no sound now. Something very bassy. That's also a trick that they that we use in dance music as well. We can use a filter. It's often used. We can we can actually if we go to this this piece of music here now. We can actually use the filter uh, with automation. You'll hear that on a lot of tracks. We can automate that. But what we also have as well is we can use it in bandpass mode instead. Let's just turn that off for now. If we find a problem frequency, we'll get very, very forensic with that. Just go through. You might remember me showing you this on the one band. So uh, what you'll often do is you'll often boost first to find where the problem is, and then and then cut. But these are these are these are pass filters, so they're not you can't boost them; you can just cut them. So we can make that wider for a minute. 
Now remember what I showed you on the last video, if we grab the middle of it, we can make it wide there, instead of using the knobs. Can you hear that working? Got a phaser. Put the bottom one in. Put that in there. Anyway, so that's what, that's what you use those for. So let me just turn those back into the mode I want. So I'm gonna do this piano again. Give it a bit more level. You can hear us straight away. Just by adding that. Takes that, that low end out. Probably not as harsh. 18 dB per octave. And I've, I've come to the second one now. I can push that up. Let's hear that now. Here's the original. Now you can cross these bands if you want. You could take this band down here if you wanted to. There's no rules really, but it's just it's just generally you use them in the same kind of areas they're actually set in so that high mid can go down below the, the mid and the mid can come above the high mid. If we wanted instead to add some air into that piano, introduce a lot of noise there now. You can hear the pedal noise and stuff now. Alternatively, what I could do instead is I can come back to the this one, this low pass filter and go right to the top, have it very shallow, the de descent on it. Then use this one just to... see there now we're doing some boosting cutting the output is now higher than the input and we can match them if we want Now you'll find that high and low pass filters are very useful when you're mixing, especially on things like electric guitars, on bass guitars, on a lot of stuff so that you create space in the mix. So that's how all those different sectors work. And again, as I showed you on the one band EQ, we can come in here and grab, if we grab in the colored area, we can change the Q of a, of a setting and uh, that will do the cut and the, the boost there. It's as simple as that. Then of course you can then save them. Let's show you on a piece of uh, music now. Let's just ref reset that. And again, I want to give this, just do a bit to this, this piece of music. So this time I'm not doing any high pass filtering. Going through there, just finding a frequency that I want. I need to pull that back again.
Now the thing with EQ as well is don't be extreme with it, is that uh, often uh, just nudging it slightly will make much more of a difference than trying to make it extreme. And a lot of mixes you, you get to just full of EQ that's all just very lots of bass and lots of treble and often mid holes, as, as you'll hear me talk about. It's one of my sort of pet bugbears. Uh, but it's well worth experimenting with this. So check out the high and the low pass filters. And then uh, again, one of the rules we talk about, although in a sense there are no rules, is that we tend to say uh, boost with wide bands and cut with narrow bands. So if you're doing boost, make them nice and wide. And if you're going to do some, some cutting, then you'd probably go for a nice narrow band cut like that, uh, just in the mix like that. <laughs> So there we go. That is the seven band EQ. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.